skull that come from a snake are due to jumping genes. This is a mechanism which we didn't know about until recently. So what I'm saying to you is this. The same evidence can lead to different inferences. The first thing that you said was a common ancestor, but according to scientists, that's not true in the case of the 25% similarity of the genes between the snake and the cow. Is that Thank you. Is that just a it's, just genes, like it's, just a, it's a process in biology which we discovered in the last couple of years. Which, how does that work? I don't know. I've never heard of it. They're still trying to work out how it works. No, they they not. It's, a, it's a developing field. What I'm saying to you, sir, is this. The same evidence can lead to different inferences. Well, you can if you just come up with something I've never heard of. But then you've got to have some evidence to support that. No, but, but sir, I mean, sir, what you're trying to do, see, with due respect to yourself, and I respect the fact you try and do it, you challenge the scientific view. You can't challenge a scientific view with a faith based Okay, but sir, because sir, this very important. Got, I'm not challenging a scientific worldview based upon a faith worldview. What I'm doing is this. I'm taking a scientific worldview and I am looking at the evidence and I am understanding that even within secular academia there is disputes, speculation and assumptions involved in the Darwinian mechanism. So for example, people like Lynn Sagan and James Shapiro, who are both atheists and well-known evolutionary biologists, they don't agree with neo-Darwinism like other biologists They're don't. They're biologists and don't yes. agree? They, they don't sure? believe, sir, they don't believe, like Lynn Margulis, she doesn't believe that natural selection, working on variations, created all the, all the, the, the diversity of life. She has her own theory called symbiogenesis, right? She believes How many other scientists support that? Support I don't know the numbers. I don't know the Probably numbers. Just but, but sir, why well, I want you to understand, truth is not democratic. Truth is based on evidence. 50 years ago, all the physicists in the world said the universe is, well, 70 years ago, they said the universe is eternal. Today, they say they had a beginning, the universe had a beginning with the Big Bang. So, scientific consensus is not truth, scientific consensus is just science and science changes yeah, but, over time. But with evolution it would take something incredibly monumental for it to be disproven now. But sir, I'm it's not challenging evolution. Accepted. It's the most accepted theory in science. Sir. Second only to the fact that the, the earth spins around the sun. Do you okay. believe the earth spins around the sun? It, evolution is as accepted as that. Okay, sir, let me just explain something. Evolution is not a theory. Evolution is an observation. Darwinism is the theory to explain a history of life and a mechanism. So Darwinism is what I'm challenging. And Richard Dawkins in his book... So you're not uh, challenging evolution? No. And I'll explain the difference between the two. Richard Dawkins in his book, uh, uh, Devil's Chaplain, he says, we may have to discard Darwinism in the 21st century as new facts may come to we light. We may do. Right? So all I'm saying is this, something which I was taught when I was at school is a fact, is not a fact, it's yeah, speculative but a minute, and it's based on assumptions and disputes. You've got to challenge that a little bit and say, well, okay, you don't accept some of the detail in evolution, you accept evolution, but not the Darwinian view. Where do you think man came from? I believe man was created by God. Can you explain the difference? Well, how do you, how do you, how do you explain the fact that our DNA is similar to other creatures because we came from the same creator what you're doing is this you're saying based upon the evidence my inference is the only one possible all I'm saying to you is that's illogical the same evidence can lead to different inferences you can't you can't say you accept evolution and then in the same breath say we were created by some invisible spirit in the god in a paradise but, but, sir, but that's an what origin is evolution myth. we need that's to first define evolution. evolution that is an origin myth no what's an origin myth is that we came together by a cosmic event an accident a stroke of luck and as basically Richard Dawkins argues, once you get the stroke of luck, once you get the first miracle, you, they can explain the rest. 
That's the mythology. Can I, can I just add something here? So you're saying this is something that we have no evidence on, but you're saying it's a creator. Who created the creator? Where's the evidence for your work, for your worldview? There's none for that either. So okay. technically there's no evidence on either side. Okay. So how can you say that one well, is there's more the evidence other? on our side. Okay. Yeah, I know. But the evidence, yeah. the evidence for the existence of God, I'm going to mention briefly. All around us, we see design. Yes. Now, Darwinists try and explain design away, and they say this design is an illusion. In, in, in reality, correct. it's just adaptation. Correct. Right? But there's a few problems with that. Number one, not all of the things that we see in nature are, are adaptations. There are things in nature which are not adaptations. Like there are what? things in nature which are values which are not tangible. For example, according to the Darwinian worldview, all of, and I don't think uh, my friend here is going to disagree with that, all of the aspects of the human nature, our art, our mathematics, our reasoning, our morality, our civilization, are evolutionary byproducts of natural selection. I don't think you disagree with that. That's true. But yes. the problem with that is this. We have human values which transcend the selfish gene idea. And that's oh, a minute, you're my mixing world. up the selfish yes. gene again. No, because that's central to neo Darwinism. What things are you talking about? What, what? Okay, so for example, according to neo Darwinism, the reason why I help someone is because they'll help me back or they're related to me, kin selection and reciprocal altruism, whatever they want to call it. But that doesn't make sense because many human beings help other human beings who they're not related to and who they will not get anything back in return for. And that disproves reciprocal no, no. altruism and kin selection. We are basically tribal species. No, that's an assumption. Is we are. No, no. We lived in okay. tri small tribes sir. and we survived by helping one another. Okay, sir. Here's the thing. The selfish gene idea is that natural selection works at a genetic level, right? And all of the actions you do in your life are either to help you survive, meaning your genes to survive, or to help you procreate, reproduce. But can you explain to me, if that is true, and that's what Dawkins believes, that's what the selfish gene is about, why do human beings help other human beings who they're not related to and who don't aid their survival and reproduction? Because, because of this tribal... Would you, here's a question, a pertinent question, would you go out of your way to help another Muslim? Yes. It's tribalism. He's part of your tribe. How does that aid my genes? No, 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 no. Because remember, remember this, No, sir. no, no, it's nothing to do with the genes. Remember this, sir, look. You've got the Darwinian building, right? You've got the chandeliers, you've got the fans. I'm going to the very foundations. If there is a fact that we know in our lives which goes against the Darwinian mechanism, which Darwinism can't explain, then that is falsified. So I'm giving you a very particular question. Wait a minute. Do no, no, human beings... On. Okay, look, something very simple. How many people here have given charity in their life? Raise your hands. Well, okay. Did you give the chat? Raise your hands if you gave charity because you wanted to aid your survival or the survival no, of your no, genes. No, 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 you've misunderstood what it means. To help you reproduce. Raise your hands. So, all of the people that gave charity did Why not give you to aid their survival. That up? At a basic level, we're here to recreate. That tree That's an is giving off seeds all the time because it, it's evolutionary, it's driven at a, 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 a genetic sir, level to reproduce. Sir, evolution has no foresight, no planning. No. So don't talk of it in, yeah, but it in wouldn't a way be that here it's a progression. If it, wasn't, if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't be here. Sir. And those that preceded it, that didn't weren't driven that way, have become, uh, 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 have become extinct. Sir, I don't disagree with that. My question is this. When we speak about a blind mechanical force, then you can't use words to show that it has some But you're mixing in something that's got nothing to do with that blind force. But when you're talking, in, you're mixing in civilization of course it and, does and the need that because we've gone beyond a certain level we've got enough to eat and shelter and our kids are okay we can look at other things no but sir here's the thing and the Why? reason you do it for a fellow muslim is tribalism coming okay. sir you're now proving my point
You're talking about values beyond selfish genes, which doesn't make any sense under your worldview. It does make sense. The okay. selfish so, gene level okay. is, is the sex drive for recreation. That's, That's all the gene cares about. Yep. It doesn't know or care anything about you giving money to charity or helping a guy who's fallen down or protecting okay. a woman who's being attacked. I agree. It doesn't know anything about that. That's totally. to do with us, a manifestation of our intelligence and the fact we've, we've evolved in small groups where we had to protect Sir, one another. you either believe in Darwinism or you don't. I do, if you yeah. believe in Darwinism, then every aspect of the human mind and every aspect of our behavior, our physiology and our psychology is the result of you natural selection. The and what you're doing is this, for life. you're making exceptions. You can't make exceptions. If there's an exception, then Darwinism's wrong. Are there values outside no, no. Why, of the why is Dar idea? No, Darwinism talks about the survival of the fittest. Yes. Right? Natural selection. And the, he explains it that yep. way, right? The diversity that puzzled him for years in the planet. What you're talking about is something separate. How is that. it separate? Well, helping people and ha building hospitals so we can cure sick people is nothing to do with that. Exactly. And if we do have those feelings... Well, what are you saying? It, where are you saying it came from? Wait a minute. If you're saying that God gave us this, yes. which it is, God also gave us the instinct to go around killing one another, which no other animal on this planet does, okay. but without good reason. Okay. Now here's the thing. I don't disagree with you that human beings can go around killing each other, but that's a different tangent. You're speaking about the reason why the selfish gene idea does explain our physiology and our psychology. But you haven't No, given no, the I just said it why, it why it gives us a Okay, sir. It do might do with our sex drive. <laughs> no, but sir. Look, which is the most look, sir, fundamental look, drive we This have. is what I disagree with. I disagree with this selfish gene idea that we are lumbering robots that are being controlled by these selfish molecules for their propagation. I don't and think I believe so. Did Richard Dawkins say that? Yeah, that's what he says, but I don't believe that. We're, we're robots. Yeah, Ro we're, Dawkins we're, we're said that in the book. Robots. I read the book 30 or 40 years ago, but I can't remember him saying that. You can, you can go read it again. He says we're lumbering robots that are programmed by selfish genes. Read it. Well, I think... I mean, another chap who was here a few weeks ago when you brought this up said that Dawkins has actually expressed the view that he, he gave it the wrong title because it doesn't mean that human beings are selfish. Yeah, but what it does and mean, what it does mean on a fundamental level, empathy and altruism are survival mechanisms. That's what it means. Yeah, but the, the things that you're talking about, the charity and the medical help building hospitals and helping one another, has come on relatively recently. That's not true. That's again when another did... Darwinian assumption. Archaeologists have discovered that almost over 3,000 years ago, they came across what looked, as of today, like a welfare type of society. Where? This was, I believe, in Italy. In the sense that they were taking care of people that were disabled. 3,000 years no, ago. No, but Darwinism, Darwinism assumes that we were all all against all, Wait a minute. and we were all when trying to survive. When were the pyramids built? 5,000 years ago. So it's since then, yes, it's quite possible. So I'm no, talking no, but the about... assumption is, from the beginning, we were all against all, and we developed morality as a survival mechanism. There's no evidence for that. I think the evidence is the fact that we have, we were in Africa, that's the origin of man, on the Serengeti Plain in Africa. What does that prove? That doesn't prove anything. That, because that's where the original tribes were. Okay, but what does that prove? Look, you're giving random... Wait a minute, it doesn't... Look, give me something that supports your worldview. Don't just make statements about science... We know, I think early on, like a lot of creatures, like the chimpanzee and the gorilla, we recognise that we have to survive in groups. No, but that's an assumption. Well, How we, do see you know it, we see it with the chimpanzee and the gorilla. Are you saying human beings only help each other to survive? Yes. Well, they okay, did that's then. what I disagree they with. Then, they did then. But we've moved on now. So, okay, tell me this. Why have we moved on according to your worldview? 
Well, we've, we've evolved as creatures, as society has evolved. I mean, uh, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm retired, but, you know, a few hundred thousand years ago, I wouldn't be, there was no such thing as retirement. I'd be dead. Not but, sir, or murdered you're, by you're, somebody. You're assuming that from the very beginning, it was all against all, not cooperation. That's a Darwinian assumption. We don't assumption. really know. That's we don't fine. really know. I don't disagree with you saying, um, I don't know. What I disagree with is Darwinian assumptions which go unchallenged. That's what I disagree with. But then why is your worldview better? What, what supports your argument? Because you in the beginning of your speech, you, you pick up two books and you said, this is one that's, in your opinion, wrong, this is right. And basically all this time, he has quietly tried to defend his view. And you've been attacking it and doing it really well, I'd say. You have, you have your research, you know about Darwinism. But then, where's your, where's your thoughts on why your worldview is the right one, even though there's not all the evidence? you got to have some, because you, you, he's trying to give you evidence, but you're not giving us any evidence why your worldview would be any more real or have more evidence than Darwinism. So could you, do you have that's, some? That's a fair question, and I'll answer that. So, number first, the first thing to explain is what is my view, and then I'll try and explain why I believe it to be true. Yeah. And you can challenge it. I'll yeah. be happy for you to challenge it. Number one, I believe that the reason why we exist is to worship God, and that there is a God. Number two, I believe the Quran is the word of God. Okay? And I believe that God sent messengers throughout time. Jesus, Abraham, Moses, all of these are messengers of God. That's my view. The reason why I believe it to be true, number one, is because all of nature, for me, my inference based upon studying nature, is that there is a creator behind nature. That's my inference. And my second inference is, it makes sense that the creator would communicate with us. And the message of Islam is what I would expect a creator to tell us. The creator tells us, to be good to each other and to have a relationship with God. It's a very simple worldview, and I'm happy for why, why, why then did he choose just to talk to the odd individual down history, you know, that you can count on the fingers of your hand? If he wants us to believe in him and act in a certain way, why doesn't he talk to us individually and make a, a, give us the option of making up our own mind? Why did he talk to a man in a cave? Okay. Now, here's, here's, here's the answer to that. Firstly, God sent a messenger to every single nation on earth. And God says in the Quran that he doesn't punish until he sends a messenger and the messenger is rejected. Now, if we saw God right now, there would be no test of life. There would be no free choice of choosing between good and evil. We would just be, we would just be determined to follow God. No one disagrees about the sun, but with God we have the choice to believe or disbelieve. So God has left it open for us. And God chose people, but when he chose these people, he didn't just choose them and give them nothing. He gave them evidences to show people that they were messengers of God. And each prophet, each prophet came with prophecies which came true, or they came with other pieces of evidence to show people. If ever, if every single human being alive today disbelieved in God or believed in God, they're going to do it of their own free will, and that is the reason why God doesn't just appear in front of us. Because what message did he send to China? For Sorry, to China. I don't know. He didn't send that. No, no, no. You're assuming God did it. But do you know why? Well, the Chinese sir, are not religious people. Okay, sir. Every single society in the history of the world has had a concept of God. Where did that concept come from? It came from two places. It came because we as human beings, we have a natural inclination to God. This is what even psychologists today say. We have a natural inclination to God. Two, God's messengers came to remind us about God. That's why every... Find me a language that doesn't have a word for God. It doesn't exist. The explanation is that we naturally look for causality in things. Why does the wind blow? Why does it rain? What's that spark across the sky? What's that bang, thunder? And people used to say, oh, it's the spirits. The spirits are angry. We've got to give a sacrifice to the spirits. 
That's why, and you get it everywhere in the world. Okay, you, so you know, that, and, and if you go around the world, South, South America, North America, China, they have their own origin myth. They've created an origin myth. Where did the world be? And they've come up with a story. Okay, so two, two, the Adam and Eve story is another story. Two, two different things here. Science explains how the world exists, how the world works. It doesn't explain why the world exists. These are two different things. Why does it need to be a why? Okay, so that's a different discussion. No, it's and not. It is a different said. discussion. Because what you're doing is this. You're challenging a question being asked. And what I'm saying is... Well, I have, why to, not? If the, I have to if you say it doesn't answer why. And you're presupposing there has to be a why. And this is exactly what Dawkins says. And he says it's when someone asks why, they're actually asking how. They're not. When someone asks why, they're actually asking why. If I ask the question, how does that building work? Some engineer will come along and explain to me the whole structure and explain to me how the lift works and how the electronics work. If I ask, why is it there? Who made it? It's a valid question. It is with things like that. It, well, why it not probably the isn't with the, with the universe. Why is it an invalid question to ask that? Because you're, it presupposes that there's a set answer. There is an answer that explains it all. Okay, what makes you think that it doesn't? There is no answer. Because there's no evidence for your answer. Your answer. Okay, so what are you the doing answer? now? Nobody knows the answer. So what we're the doing point? is we're reasoning. What's the point? I'm not asking you. Okay, but sir, you got up this morning and you came to speak this morning and made some logical decisions, right? So what we do in our life is we make logical decisions based upon evidence. All I'm doing today is having a discussion about evidence. Because if I was to ask you, it says Darwinian delusions, in, right? Can these, do you think these words came together by chance or was there intelligence behind them? Why? It's just not a helpful question to ask. It doesn't get you anywhere. Look, if we didn't ask why, sir, if we didn't, if we didn't ask why, of course it's relevant. Of course it's relevant. If we didn't ask why, it's relevant, but it doesn't get you anywhere. Of course it does. Nobody knows the answer. That's an assumption. What, uh, what evidence? You what, 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 if you look out on the what universe, evidence? we've now in the last few hundred years discovered that our sun is one of billions of suns in our galaxy alone. Immense distances apart from one another. Then you have to say, well, if, if some spirit in it, why did he create all that? There's billions of miles apart. But, but sir, you're assuming that if human beings were everywhere, then that would be okay. And because we're not there, why did God made it? The question is this. God made the whole universe, the seven heavens, to worship him. Seven. A rock worships God. A tree worships God. You're assuming for something to be designed, human beings have to a be rock everywhere. Worship. That's not true. A assumption. <laughs> A rock doesn't have any... No, but sir, you're, you're making assumptions. You're making assumptions. <laughs> well, that's a... Step of... <laughs> Do you believe a rock is a thinking entity yes. that worships? <laughs> that's another that's assumption. No, there may be things... Another sir, assumption. <laughs> sir, there may be things in your materialistic worldview which don't make sense to you. But there are things in nature which we understand now which would not have made sense at all to Isaac Newton. For example, exactly. if I told Isaac Newton, do you know what? A particle, a subatomic particle, when you observe it, it acts differently. True. Would he have believed me? He would have said, I'm mad. No. If I told him time and space... I think he would have sir, asked, sir, where, how did you do, arrive at that sir. conclusion? And, and we know this double slit experiment to show that. And if I said to him, Sir Isaac, Time and space are not fixed, they're dynamic, like fabric. He would say, I'm mad. So there's things that we know, know now today. Mad. Will ask sir, you how you... sir, there's like things that we know now today, which even Isaac Newton would not have understood. Well, of course. The world is more complex than we think. Of course. Yeah? So the question is this. All of this complexity, including ourselves, it makes sense that there's a creator behind this. Well, assumption. It's an, it's an explanation. It's an inference. But if you have an explanation well, what like proof, that... What proof have you got that, that, that prayer is answered? What evidence have you got that prayer is answered? 
Okay. That's a subjective expert. Uh, subjective. Experience. It's a reasonable question, isn't it? Sorry. It's a reasonable question. It is, and I don't disagree. But what I'm so, saying so what is, evidence? I'm saying is there's so what evidence, evidence do you have that any prayers no, answered? There isn't. They've done tests on prayer. They wait, wait, prayer. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, sir. Sir. Some people praying. Sir. They say, oh, the guy got better. Well, he might have got better sir, anyway. Sir. You know what I mean? We're not talking about subjective experiences here. We're talking about things that we can all agree about, things which are objective. Do you agree with me that when you see information like in this book, there is intelligence behind this information? Yes. Okay, there's information in the cell. In the cell? The human cell. Billions of our cells. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. As there is in every other creature right? living in. So, if yeah. this came by intelligence, why didn't our hands and the cells? Because that's been a, clearly a product of our intelligence. We're biological creatures. But it's Same not, as all these other things are that's biological right? creatures. You can only be animal, vegetable, or mineral. Right? Not really. Well, what else is there? There's bacteria. That, I think that comes under animal. <laughs> I think so as well. <laughs> so there's, a, there's other cl classes according to you. Look. There's bacteria, there's archaea, these are different domains. You've never heard of animal, vegetable, or mineral? No, not really. The fact of the matter is the world is more complex, <laughs> sir. The world is more complex. And, to, to and make with us the to respect, your religion is just trying to incredibly simplify it. What it's really saying, and I'm afraid a lot of the people here abide by, is don't try and understand anything. Allah, just follow. Just follow. Don't try and reason. Yeah, yeah Allah. exactly. Yeah. Sir, yeah. And it, it invokes la mental laziness. No, what we're doing is this. We're just being consistent. When you look at yeah, information, you say intelligence. And when I ask you the same question about the human cell, you say, no, there wasn't intelligence behind that. All we as Muslims do is we're consistent with our reasoning. The same reason why I know... That's a product of evolution. No, that's an assumption. I know this ladder came together by intelligence, not by a cosmic accident, right? I didn't see the designer. The universe in my eye is more complex than this ladder. So I make the same conclusion. I'm just being consistent. Nothing in your presumption. <laughs> At the end of the day, let's go. The world today has come for science. So, in your book, there's no explanation other than the spiritual ones. How the world was created. That it was just a god that created it. There's no scientific, you know, ejaculations. There are no. How did it all go? Okay. Go. Two things to understand here. Number one, the Quran led to the scientific method being made. The Quran is not a scientific book. It is a spiritual book. And all of the science that we have today, which we love, would not have been possible without the Quran. So, okay, okay. I made a claim. You can challenge it. It's what has come out of the Islamic world? Tell me something in the last 500 years. Don't go back to we invented mathematics. Tell me something. I mean, if you go to the Nobel Prize, which is okay, for, for, okay. for science, okay. physics, nothing, almost nothing goes to the Islamic world. Okay. Sadly, sadly, okay. look how many can Jewish Nobel Prize winners okay. there are. Firstly, I can only answer a question that I agree with. If the question has assumptions which I disagree with, then I'll have to challenge it. Now, Muslims have not won the Nobel Prize because the Nobel Prize has only been around for about 100 years. And it's a Western construction of what they believe should be a prize given to people who advance in science. Now, you can't use that as criteria to judge the Islamic world. Because if you want to know what came from the Islamic world, the scientific method itself came from the Islamic world. What you're doing is you're taking a Western concept of the Nobel Prize, and then you're asking a question, okay, look, when you say the one second, one second. Hassan, Hassan ibn Haytham, who invented the scientific no, no, method, no, in did first, not win the Nobel in Prize, first, we owe because the, the Nobel we owe Prize all came all about a thousand years after. So it's an irrelevant but why question. have we got no 
prize winners, say it's only a hundred years, right? We've got about three, I think there's been, three Muslim winners of the Nobel Prize. Okay. Against, I think, 120 Jewish winners of the Nobel Prize. How can that be? You're a same genetic maker. How come the Jews can... Okay, your assumption is, your assumption is, sir, 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 sometimes, sir, sir, sometimes you have lenses on and you look at the world and you have green lenses on and you say everything's green. All I'm asking you to do is to take off those lenses. You're assuming that for somebody to be scientific, they have to win the Nobel Prize.